after the Democrats began to lose the South because they went for the whole country with racial politics. They just shifted from their racial politics in the South to then flipping it to the rest of the country, racial identity politics with the minorities. The Republicans were actually trying to fuse the country into a nationalistic, free market empire at the time. I'm not even saying it was perfect, but it was a lot better goal than the globalists have today. And they were actually trying to unify the nation post-World War II. The Democrats were not about to let that happen. Came out with a very cynical, sophisticated, Machiavellian program. And so when uh, Schink, if I'm pronouncing it right, and, 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 and others on the Young Turks and MSNBC get up there and go, Alex, you know full well the Democrats flip from being the racist party to the Republican Party. That's not really true. And you know the Southern strategy under Nixon came many years later. So they are really scared of this. And, and again, I've discovered whatever we report on that they freak out about. You know, when they freak out and go, it's ridiculous that we want to ban your guns. Everybody knows we don't want to ban your guns. Now, please stop playing the clips where we say we're going to ban them. That's because it's hurting them. And I'm going to go on hurting you because you're a bunch of tyrants. And when I mention the fact that they are the party of race politics and identity politics and class warfare, they get very upset, folks, because they're out in the open race baiting. If you flipped the people on MSNBC into Klan uniforms from 50 years ago, I mean, it's the same rhetoric, folks, but for minorities. It is. That's what it is. Word for word. They flip the script. And I'm not going to put up with it. So uh, here is a trailer for the film that exposes this uh, runaway slave. Here it is. Pre-1960, most African Americans were Republicans. After Martin Luther King was freed from jail by John F. Kennedy, the African American vote has gone Democratic. What exactly did we get exchanged for our 95% Democratic swaying vote? We gave up three to one odds in abortion. 14 million black babies have died since 1973. Dependent on welfare systems. They begin to take young women and they begin to tell the young women, well, we would give you money, you just stay home. But what if I want to get married? You lose your benefits. When you remove the black man out of the house, the likelihood of the young black man going to jail increases by 60%. This is what this party has given on a platter to African Americans. Sometimes you can't tell the difference between now and 200 years ago. And we, by 95%, support this. Go on back to the plantation. You have a group of people on the plantation, and we've run away. We ran away. We got free. The more the government gives us, the more debt and more control we accumulate. But here we come back to the plantation, and we're telling them, y'all can be free. Anyone that comes along and talks to me about taking away what I've given you, they must be evil. They've got to be Republicans. You have 40, 50 years, an entire culture of people. This is all they know. They don't know anything else. Because, see, in the black community, there's always somebody that's got to keep them niggas in control. You could call it slavery in the slave quarters or now in the urban ghettos of America. I think life is about our future and, and making decisions that you feel like uh, will serve you best. We have an opportunity in this nation as blacks that we could not find anywhere else. We the people are still in charge of this country. We've joined up with these people who are haters and, and we're, they're racist, but they're not. All we're doing is telling the others that are still on the plantation, you can be free. This is not the land of guarantees, but it's the land of opportunity. The sky's the limit as to what we can achieve here. But when you say racism is the problem, you put the power of for your future in someone else's mm -hmm. hands. What we need in this country today is more black men to confront it. Because you as a white man, you can't confront it. Right now, if you said anything to the black community, you're going to be accused of racism. I guess I'm racist too, right? Tyranny is colorblind. White or black, it will control you. Run, America. Run faster. Don't give up. Don't give in. Are you tired yet? Run harder.
again, uh, the film's Runaway Slave. We're going to carry it, and we're going to get all those guys on the show. The point is, is that I've been covering this for 18, 19 years, but just kind of mentioning as a footnote, reading so much history, and I realized right in front of us, worldwide, governments want to get people on welfare. And if a country's half Catholic, half Protestant, they'll play those groups off against each other. Or if it's you know half animist in Africa and in, in, in some region and half Christian, they'll play those groups off against each other, even though it's black people. Uh, again, or white people against white people. They will divide and conquer, just like Ukraine. Catholics against Orthodox. Slavs against Aryans, as they call themselves in Western Ukraine. And this is what they do. This is how they operate. And then you look at the social engineering of the eugenicist and the, and the uh, family courts that were set up. And if you look at how they were set up in England 120 years ago, set up here about 110 years ago in places like New York City with the Rockefeller Foundation on record, and go look at who set them up, and it gets rid of the courts. You see, you want to do a court to decide who got the kids, or you want to do a court to decide what was going to happen. No, now it's just a judge, and uh, now it's a system where the health department decides and the CPS decides, and, oh, we don't want fathers in the home, we want only women, and then the state is their husband, and we pay those women only enough to control them. And then we wonder why the statistic they were showing in that film is a 60% increase in prison. It's a several hundred percent increase in prison and, and a 80% increase in illegitimacy and a culture totally destroyed and people who literally have no idea even what country they're in. And that's because... The blacks were targeted as the as the test case, as Tony Brown has pointed out many times. The exact same formula is being done in every other community. I mean, the general public, people that are raised by single parents on average, I'm not attacking single parents. They always act like if you point out the statistics that you're four times more likely to be on drugs, five times more likely to end up in prison. The number used to be three times, now five times. Uh, that, that, that you're going to have a life of poverty. Even if you come from a middle class or wealthy home and it's single parent, your kids statistically are totally screwed because they're biologically designed to be around a man and a woman in that, in that interaction. It ends the human cycle. It ends the family. And the family's almost gone. The West is completely dying. And they're going into the third world and teaching people to get rid of their families. They're going into Africa and Asia and Latin America with micro loans and they advertise them like they're a great deal. In most cases, they're not where they will give women maybe a $50 loan and then have the women on TV and radio what stars they are. And then, and then the, 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 the few success cases, they're like payday loans. The women never even get out of debt. But then they tell the women, that's all right, we'll forgive your debt. Just divorce your husband, kick him out of the house and put your kids in a government run dormitory where the state raises them and you'll get them on the weekend. And hey, honey, you can go after you work in the factory till eight o'clock at night Without with your lady friends and have a drink, you can go out and have a little bit of fun. And see, breaking up the family, telling men, hey, you'll see your kids every other week. Go out and have a good time. Have your, you know, your mama baby at home. Go knock up a bunch of women. And you can just drive around in your nice car and ha have a couple jobs and have a little bit of bling bling and be a big star. Yeah, it's fun for the individual to not be home with their kids sometimes. It's fun for the women to give their kids over to the state. Leave them at school till eight, nine at night. Put them in programs with the government-run schools on the weekend. It's fun for you, but it ends humanity as we know it. And then long-term, your kids don't come see you in the nursing home. There's no family reunions. People don't even visit their parents because we've been turned black, white, I don't care, into animals. 60% of the country's divorced. Men don't know what men are. Women don't know what w women are. And it has been done on record by the eugenicist and by IBM and by the Rockefeller Brothers Foundation and Carnegie Endowment on record. In Game 2.0, that's on PrisonPlanet.tv. Dr. Kaufman goes through all the government documents on how they were going to end heterosexuality to lower the population. Yeah, you got half the men with other men and half the women with other women. That'll cut it right there. And then you wage war against the family. It's not even a moral judgment against, quote, gay people. It's that it's scientifically being pushed, and no one can deny that, from every angle to break us up where we're total atomized 
individuals, but not in the classical sense of an individual part of a family, part of a tribe, part of a group. There are no more tribes. There are no more cultures. There are no more people. There's MTV and CNN and Fox News and ESPN, and you tune in and you watch Friends, the show Friends. You don't actually have Friends. You watch the show Friends, to use an example from 15 years ago. And you have no identity. Your identity is whatever the television puts into you. And I am a runaway slave from the psychological warfare, artificial reality, matrix-like level, artificial habitat the globalists are trying to construct and trying to put us into. That's what's going on here. I want everyone to be free. I want everyone to realize how much potential and human power they have. And I want them to realize that their individuality is under attack. The globalists sell a fake uh, synthetic form of individuality where, where, oh, you're an individual. You don't have a family. You don't have really any real friends that would ever come to your aid. But you've got a culture, a plastic fake corporate culture that's put out that you buy into that empowers you. This morning I was working out at the gym and they had an ad, I think it was for Xbox or PlayStation. I meant to write a note, I forgot, but it was something like, you know, dare to be great, dare to be somebody. It, it showed a bunch of pirates fighting with each other, but, but they're blurring reality. They showed real actors fighting as pirates and then cut to the video game of pirates killing each other. You can go out and kill each other and be on the high seas and be in real battles, but never actually be in a real battle. You can go and buy a Ferrari for $1,000 in Second Life or whatever it is and all these other virtual realities. And then people really think you're cool in a fantasy world, but it's not real. That is humans being inserted into the matrix. The globalists said 50 years ago they were going to develop virtual reality games that would become indistinguishable like the holodeck in Star Trek from reality until you would choose the fake easy reality over the hard true reality that is actually rewarding. Yeah, I would imagine if you were in a few dozen sea battles with real cutlasses and, and blunderbust hacking people up, you'd be pretty tough. But you're not really in sea battles when you go and play those video games. I would imagine if you flew around Vietnam in a helicopter, uh, you know, getting shot at and shooting at people, uh, that would be a life experience because people are really dying. The, the virtual reality isn't real. And the virtual reality is bigger than all these video games that say, dare greatly, you know, be somebody. I was sitting there during like a 30 second break working out. Is the way I'm starting to work out. There's like no breaks, basically. But I stopped and paused, and I'm sitting there looking at it, and it was saying things on the screen like, be somebody, be part of an adventure. Your life starts now. No, your life begins to end in these false realities. And the media says, hey, don't listen to him. This is something that will make you feel like a human being. Yeah, because they take away our cultures. They take away our normal rites of passage. They take away the feminine and male rites of passages. They destroy our families. We don't know anything better. We're set down in front of a television from birth. And it's our girlfriend. It's our boyfriend. It's our father. It's our mother. It's our ancestor. It's our guru. It's our Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's our guide. No, it's not. It's an artificial construct where the enemy can reach through and openly program you any way they want. Literally, ladies and gentlemen, I could dress up like a trendy, grow a beard, and I'm not knocking you to grow a beard. Hey, it's working for you. And go out on the street and have women throw themselves at me. I could literally do all the fake things that the media says do and have success, but it would be with other plastic, non-real people who will never be fulfilled and empowered and who aren't real. Because it's true, the globalists want to make us unconscious, programmable, biological androids in their own words. If you're not self-actuating and actually guiding your own development and consciously understanding yourself and knowing thyself, you are not conscious. You are not real. You are not even a person. You're not living. No wonder you're so unhappy. No wonder. And you run after the false plastic synthetic construct as if it's going to empower you. I see the young men trying to dress up like Jay-Z and stuff and, 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 and trying to take on these trappings of success, believing that's going to give them success within the system. It's not. It's all a hologram.